All right, we're live. Hi, friends. Hope everybody is having an awesome day. We are super excited to be doing a live again. And we're starting out with Miss Bella Grace and her puppies. And she has five mini golden doodles, and they are growing so fast. They're one week and change. Let me actually look up their date. I just looked up Oakley's, so I've got hers on the brain. Let's see. Hey, Cumberland Cavaliers. Thanks for joining us. April 11th. Oh, they're one week and one day old. And Oakley's, we will get to, are six days old. So that is, we got a lot of newborns in the house. And so after they finish nursing, um, I'm going to do their ENS because I haven't done it yet today. I was saving it for uh, the live so you guys could see how they've progressed. They've, they're still pretty vocal when I do it, not going to lie. But by the end of the second week, they are just relaxed and it just they don't mind it at all. So it's fun to watch them progress over the days. So that is, is really fun to do. But and everybody on this litter is sold. We sold our last boy a couple of days ago. So that part was wonderful. Let's see if there's anybody not nursing. No, they all are. I think my favorite thing to do when, I, when they're nursing is just watch their little tails. It's like the cutest thing. They go up and down. Sometimes they wiggle side to side, but it just cracks me up. We have a bunch of people on. Oh, nice. Yeah. Do some shout outs. All right. Mercedes, hi from New Jersey. Marie, hi from Michigan. Uh, Cumberland Cavaliers from Georgia. Uh, Alketa Struga. Hi again. We were a few last week. Hi from <laughs> Philadelphia. Leona Lisa from Washington State. Uh, let's see. Eileen Hoffman. Oh, hi, Eileen. Um, from New York. She says, loving all the videos. Eileen's been a frequent YouTube commenter. Oh, that's awesome. Well, ask questions as we go. Um, but again, we're, if you're just jumping on... Uh, ah. We're with Bella Grace, and we're just going through uh, doing some puppy updates and seeing them. And doing their ENS. So ENS stands for Early Neurological Stimulation. And you're going to hear some vocal puppies in a couple of seconds. They get pretty squirmy. And we put them through each of these for 10 seconds. We try to make them as comfortable as possible, but it's a challenge to their system. And that way we um, can just make them, make their body understand stressful stimulations right now. So that way when they have them in the future, they can respond to them well. And so you take them and you put them in different positions. You put them upright, on their back, upside down, you mess with each paw, and then you use a temperature change. There you go, all done. Look at that face. <laughs> all right, one down. <laughs> Bella Gracie's going to clean them. She's like, I'll just take care of you. Leona, Lisa, what newborn collars do you use? I hate the velcro ones i hate the velcro if ones you can too hold the puppy if you want to hold the puppy oh. maybe it's like yeah, okay. perfect that's great um i do not like the velcro ones either so i um use extra small newborn puppy or cat uh leashes i mean not leashes collars that i get from amazon and and then i zip tie them and so you can i'll show you in just a second so you can see right here that I zip tie it and then as they, I make sure they can get two fingers underneath and then as they get older, like you'll see Annie's in a couple of minutes, um, they don't need the zip tie anymore so I take it off. Um, but that way they keep the same, they keep the same collar from birth all the way to when they go home. And I think that's easy for families to keep up with. After they do their puppy picking, they can go back and look at other 
um, videos and stuff that we posted and know which puppy was theirs and that makes a really sweet emotional connection that they really enjoy. The cat ones are funny though because the cat ones come with um, they come with little bells on them, but I have to um, I have to, I cut the bells off because they, they they ring too much. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Yeah. Uh, so someone's asking, did you decide on a puppy name? Ooh, the contender right now is May, M-A-E. Both girls like the name. Both girls agree on the name. And um, I like the name. Dad, do you like the name? I think at this point, I'm just excited that you guys are all agreeing on a name. Well, we'll uh, see how long so, it lasts. Right. Uh, so I guess to answer your question, no, we haven't picked out a name yet. I, I think it'll be consistent when we um, actually know which dog is ours and we start calling her by the name. Right now, it's like fantasy because we haven't seen the dog yet. And so they can keep changing their mind versus once they get a dog in the house that's theirs, they can't change their opinion because you can't call a dog by multiple names. So I think after that, it's going to get really real. Oh, the vet's calling me. You want me to answer that or decline it? Uh, I mean, you guys are about to find out live how many... <laughs> Hello, this is Erin. Hi, Amanda. Okay, perfect. So it's still okay to pick up at 6 o'clock? Okay, perfect, thank you. Bye-bye. Charlotte Rose has too much poop in her to get a clear x-ray, so they're gonna take her out, see if they can go to the bathroom, and then see if they can do another x-ray. Oh my goodness, well, you guys just heard it live. Poor and, Charlotte Rose. <laughs> oh my goodness. I mean, she is a really good eater, but she's used the bathroom twice this morning, and I thought we were good to go, but that's okay. All right, which one did I not do yet? Mr. Black. Oh my goodness, he's gotten really chunky. Look at this little guy. He's dense. <laughs> yes. And Bella Grace is doing such a good job taking care of them all. She really is a great mom. All right, I'm going to switch over to some Facebook comments. So bear with me one moment. I'm going to put that up. Oh, that's such a good idea. It's, Leona says, for ENS toe stimulation, I use an electric toothbrush, so it's super easy transition to the nail grinder. That's a really good idea. That's That's, that's a really great idea. Oh, that's such a good question. All right, everybody comment below. How many puppies do you guys think Charlotte Rose is going to have? Okay, so, like a trivia? Yeah, I'm thinking... I'm thinking I'd nine. Say nine. I was going to say nine, too. Mm -hmm. Okay, our vote is nine, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in the chat. So um, That way it's documented. It's official. Yeah, so let's see. Everybody put your comments down below. Hey, Bella Grace. All right. I'm working on showing some love to our... Oh, Amanda Satterfield, she says nine, too. And Hi. Hi, Amanda. Ooh, green. He's about to not need the zip tie anymore. So this is how Bella Grace likes to nurse. She loves belly rubs. While, like, she likes to get pampered while she's being a mom. Like, she's a true little diva here. But she's not a bad diva. She's just one of those high-maintenance divas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got seven, six. Oh my goodness, someone thinks 11. That would be a huge litter. Uh, so we will, we will definitely see. Those two are cute. 
All right, Sean is asking, what do you think is a good age to add another puppy to the household? Ours is one year, just over one years old, so one year and three months. Yeah, um, I think that's a wonderful question. I personally um, love doing it between the ages of one and two because they're playful still and they're willing to um, they're willing to play with the new puppy pretty much regardless of, of what it is. Um, and then, but they're also far enough along their obedience that they have hopefully been trained um, really well so they can teach the new puppy their training. So I either say get two at a time or wait until they're about a year to two years old. That makes sense. Yeah. What would be some of the challenges of getting a puppy too early? Well, if the other puppy, if the, your older puppy, let's say you get one at like six months old, if they're not completely potty trained or if they don't have their obedience down pat, then you're, kind, you're probably going to regress into the new puppy's behaviors. That makes sense. So you want them to be obedient and be able to listen to you before you add in another complex situation. So an older dog that's been trained well can then imprint on the yeah. younger puppy. Absolutely. And so the, the second puppy could be easier to train. Yeah, they okay. say that they are. Okay. We're going to try it out. We're, I mean, I hope it is. Bella was our dream to be obedient. But at the same time, we were just not, well, not just married. We've been married about three years and we didn't have any kids. So this time around, we're, we're keeping our puppy. We have a very full schedule. We're very uh, kid, you know, we have kid, we have like their activities and stuff like that. So we're going to, it's like a whole different story for us. Oh, absolutely. So. Yeah, I'm excited to be able to share the progress because we talk so much about puppies. Yeah. And so finally, <laughs> it's going to be so neat to be able to have one of our own. So, all right, Holly Haywood, she said, hey, JP and Aaron just got on. Thanks so much for joining us. Let's Hi, see. Holly. Ooh, interesting question, Teddy. So, uh, two at a time, what about litter mate syndrome? Okay, so I have heard that from a lot of people asking questions about that and them saying that some trainers think that it's not a great idea to get um, brothers or sisters from the same litter and we've had it happen three times and all three times worked out great um, they were happy to be together there was not a dominant one and a docile one they were just happy to be together and really easy to crate train and obedient strain because they had each other to bounce off of so they didn't they never cried through the night because they had a brother with them We've had, we've had a brother and a sister go home together and then two brothers twice to go home together. Um, and it's worked out really well. So I think it just depends on the personality of the dog. And so if you get, are able to choose your dogs, maybe just picking the ones that aren't like the bossy ones maybe would be a good idea. Okay. Um, so Ruben is asking, do you use a heat lamp? No, we do not use a heat lamp. We so, don't really need to. Yeah, all of our puppies are inside of our home. Um, and so the room that we're in right now used to be a guest bedroom. And when we converted it into a puppy nursery, and so when we go to the next um, area to check on <laughs> Annie's or Oakley's, you guys can get a little quick tour of our home. But we keep the thermostat at 72 downstairs. And so that keeps all of the puppies... Uh, at a good temperature, uh, it's almost to the point where you'll see uh, Bella Grace here, she'll kind of pull this mat, uh, she'll pull this mat away to expose the floor to kind of cool herself down. Mm -hmm. um, but we want to make sure that the, uh, the puppies definitely stay warm enough. So that's a great question. And the puppies love sunbathing. Like you can see like the sunlight coming in like right here. Um, because there's windows over here. And so they will find themselves, like we'll find them crawled over to this section and they just love the sun beaming on them. So it's kind of like a, like a little bit of a built-in sun lamp, heat lamp. Erica, thanks so much for joining. She's from Goodyear, Arizona. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. So Anna Laura said, I had two sister golden retrievers at one point. They had both, they're both passed away now. Um, they were fine, but they're always chewing off each other's collars and chewing everything, <laughs> uh, even the air conditioning cord. Oh my goodness, oh, sounds man. like you had your hands full, Anna. 
That's wow. That's pretty crazy. How about but that? But I'm glad they were good together. That's funny. Oh, okay. That's an interesting question. Uh, we've seen it a little bit, Teddy. So how do you feel about breeders that demand you choose a puppy as soon as they are born? Um, I would say it's unfortunate because I would like to be able to see what each puppy is going to be able to be like or... And I know that they change. Like we do our test, like we do our assessments at four weeks old. And I tell families, this can definitely change. But from our nine years of experience, this is what I'm noticing from these guys. Um, and then also, I feel like we're pretty able to tell their curly or their weight. Um, but it's nice to get confirmation, like the difference between Lister Blue and the rest of the group. Um, well, purple is a little bit curly too, but, um, I just like to be able to give families confident answers. And when you have to pick from just a picture right off the bat, um, you don't really know what they're going to look like as they get older. Yeah, that's fair. So I think it's a little unfortunate, but I understand breeders want to make sure that they have confident, like they want to make sure that they've got buyers for their puppies. And I understand the anxiousness of wanting your puppy sold. So I and a little more, I'm a little more understanding to that also. But you can see that the benefits there, the benefits is really convenience. Yeah, it's it only is. convenience. Yeah. Like there is no other benefit to picking a puppy when it's first born. Yeah. Yeah, you bring up a good point about the curly versus wavy coats and that you can really start to see it now, but mm -hmm. when they're first born, uh, it can be a little questionable at times. Unless it's really curly, I don't start seeing the curl come out until about one week to two weeks old. Yeah, can you show the difference between like a curly and a, a wavy coat? Oh yeah, that's a good example yeah. of a So this curly. is a curly. Yeah. You wanna zoom in on it? Yeah. So you can see it just has like some S's and then the best part to look at it is on this head. It's got little S's up here versus a straight one. Sorry, Mr. Black, I'll put you back. This is completely straight and there's no S's. No S's on his back either. But he won't be a straight coat because genetically that's impossible for our dogs. They will at least have one curl gene, which means he'll be a wavy coat, so. Perfect, that's good. Um, David Michaud, hey. Hi, Thanks David, for, we're going so to Annie soon. Yep. Uh, so David is the guardian family for Annie, who will go check in on her puppies in just a few minutes. So she's actually next door. Um, so Bella Grace is, who is the dad and mom of this litter? Oh, um, dad is Mosley and mom is uh, Bella Grace. Yeah. And you can go to our website and click our dogs and then you can kind of, you'll be able to see, um, some more details of our moms and the families that care for them. Uh, it's, it's neat. All right. Um, you want to go to Annie? Let's see. Yeah, we can do that. Let's let's uh, let's do one more question and we'll move. Okay. Um, so Cumberland Cavaliers. My cousins have a dog who is not even a year old yet and accidentally got pregnant. Oh. Do you think she'll be okay? I definitely think she'll be okay because out in the wild, I don't know if they skip their first heat cycle or not. But the problem is that you might have to do more interventions. Um, go check on Oakley. Yeah, yeah, she probably wants to just go back in. I think yep. she's out. Um, the, and it's not really a problem. It, she just might not have an experience that she might not Oakley. jump into Oakley. motherhood Oakley. how Bella Grace does or how other of our moms do. She might need like uh, more assistance during labor or um, assistance like cleaning the puppies, things like that. Or you might have to weigh the puppies more frequently because... Um, you want to make sure that they're nursing, making sure that she's letting them nurse. So there's just a couple of different things that, that you're going to want to do. Um, but I think she's going to be fine health-wise and personality-wise. Like, it doesn't change them very much. If anything, it makes them a little calmer. Um, so I hope it works out well. While JP's gone, I'll check out the chat. What is the first three steps you recommend to breeder beginners? Oh, that's a good question. Um, Bella Grace. Bella Grace, they don't want to see <laughs> a close-up of you. Um, 
Okay, the first thing that I would do for breeding beginners is find, okay, so find your mom and find your, actually, just start with mom. And then you're going to want to do a genetic test on her. And if that comes back good, like that she's not a carrier for things, then you're going to want to um, do an x-ray next, which will be like OFA, Orthopedic Foundation Association, or Pin Hip. Um, and then after that, then you're going to want to research your stud and find a stud in the area that um, it has the same qualifications that you just had, you know, that you have them tested and make sure that they're good to go. And then after that, it's uh, really finding a mentor if you can to kind of walk along with you or a really good reproductive vet that will explain things to you. Yeah, both of those are so important. We are very fortunate to find a reproductive vet that really was educated and really helped us with our program and understanding how to care for the puppies well and also how to care for the moms really well. Mm -hmm. um, and then we found a mentor along the way as well, mm -hmm. which was really helpful. And the mentor came from me searching for a stud. So that it was really helpful to be able to have somebody that was generous with her time and her knowledge. So that's why we try to be generous with our knowledge also. That's right. All right, you ready to make a move? Yep. All right, Bella Grace. We'll see you in just a few minutes. If you want to grab the laptop and I'll grab the, oh my goodness, Bella Grace. I hope what you guys happened? saw that. Blue was like, hang on for dear life or milk. <laughs> so. Watch out, Bella Grace. Annie, you hopping out. Going back. Yeah, so I'll close these. So you guys can see the spaces. Let me take a little step back. And so walking into this room, we have two nurseries and that is able to um, care for all of our newborn puppies all the way up until four weeks. And then after four weeks, they go um, into our finished garage area so they can have mud, a lot more space to be able to play and uh, start working on their other training. Hey, girl. All right. These guys are walking around now. They're yeah, look how much they've peeing. grown now. <laughs> you might want to get a towel. Yeah, I feel the floor is really wet. Annie, hello. Annie, back up so everybody can see everybody. Annie. Good girl. There we go. Let me get a towel. Yep, that's a good, good idea. idea. We have someone potty right now. Come here. So these guys have grown so much in the last week. They really are chunkers, but they're not. Oh, hold on. We're about to be live again with Town & Country. Hello, this is Erin. Hi, Dr. Horn. How are you? How are you? I'm doing very well, thank you. Makes it hard, yeah. It's all good. We know that it's an estimation. Yes, her her official name is Charlotte Rose, but we call her Charlie also. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Okay. And then can you send me Bella Grace's um, repeat x-rays? The ones that we did when we came back. Yep. Cool. Thank you so much. All right. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Okay. Sounds great. Bye-bye. All right. Drum roll. All right, everybody's guesses are in. Eight. All right. <laughs> All right, shout outs to Sean, the guest eight. Marie, campaign, 
Sorry, Campania. So I apologize. Hey, hey puppies. Hey. Let's see. Nice job, you two. That was great. <laughs> All right. So back to kind of what we were talking about before. So we were talking about temperament and picking uh, right when they're born. Uh, Holly has a good question. So looking for temperament takes time, doesn't it? So picking at birth would be hard. Absolutely, Holly. We are yeah. definitely looking for... You move um, We're definitely looking for uh, a little bit of time so that way people can um, play with the puppies, get a feel for their personalities, and then um, be able to make decisions after that. So. Yeah. And I've had people that... Um, that unfortunately, like even four weeks is too early for them to pick. They really want to wait for an eight week puppy picking. And that's challenging to find, but there, there are some breeders that do it. So. Right. Do you mind moving the, moving some of the puppies over here? Yep. Yeah. Where do you mom. want them? Yeah, just around mom. Oh, okay. Be Give easier me a pinky. so everybody can see. <laughs> oh, did you hear that? Deborah, thanks so much for liking the stream. That helps a bunch. Come here, little one. So at this stage, you'll see them start to walk away from their pack and use the bathroom, which is amazing. So you can see this guy. Yeah, I think Orange is going to. That's kind of what prompted me to say it. But, um, but that's number one. That's first step to potty training. And then when we put them, when they go to their four-week-old nursery, we have all of our potty trays, and, and they will walk away from their eating and their sleeping area to go to that and go to the bathroom. So it works out really well. They're kind of, they, I mean, everybody says, how do you do that? But they really teach themselves. Right. It's just nature. Oh, that was so cute. Purple just had like a big yawn. Aw. That was cute. And your Orange puppies are moving go. around like crazy. I know. These guys are wrestling. Yeah. And Blue thinks I'm a nipple. Like <laughs> she's like she's like <laughs> rooting around on my leg. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, that's fun. Look at that face. Honey, look at this one. Isn't that cute? Uh, I'm trying to get there. There we go. We got, <laughs> we're getting the face. Tons of cuteness. Oh my goodness. All right. Annie is definitely <laughs> on her way of starting to wean though, because she is um, definitely wanting to spend more time with us and she just wants to like she's going on walks again she's doing other things and she's loving the yak cheese while we're while we're here and she's really just content being out and she you can just start to see those little shifts in how much time they want to spend with their puppies yeah Bella grace no ma'am we had your time <laughs> so i'm gonna enjoy and show you guys Bella grace over here uh... <gasps> Bella Grace is like, come back in my area. We were having fun. You got to share the love, buddy. All right, so question is, are you guys offering mentoring to new breeds? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I would definitely say if you send me an email, I always answer it. But I don't think I necessarily, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, honey. I don't necessarily feel like I have the time to take on, like, a brand new person, but I can definitely answer questions and send people in the right direction. Yeah, I think that's accurate. I mean, we want to try, someone helped us. So we want to yeah. try and help out as many people as we possibly can, but um, true mentorship takes a lot of time. Um, and so, but I don't want you to stop from asking questions, Yeah. Uh, sending us an email. We'd love to help in any way that we possibly can. So let's see. Leona says, love the guardian home concept, but do you, what do you do when a pregnant mom uh, completely goes off food? I have a girl now who is a daily struggle to see what she will eat uh, so that day and so eat? doing hand fed. Oh, wow. Uh, only, of course. Oh, my goodness. That's a lot of effort there. Yeah, so a lot of times, depends on where she's at in her pregnancy, 
the first half of pregnancy, a lot of times they don't want to eat. I, mm-hmm. think it, I think they have the same type of symptoms that we do as humans. Some morning sickness or uneasiness, nausea. Um, but we have found great success with using um, the probiotic, Purina ProPlan probiotic. That really entices them to eat. You can do that before. We start it once they've had the babies, but you can do it beforehand because it's just like a fiber multivitamin. Um, so that's really enticing. And then another mom that we have, Oakley, her family uses the Stella and Chewy raw food um, topper. It comes in a big red bag, and you can almost like sprinkle it on the food, and she loves it. And she is a pretty notorious finicky eater. Yeah, golden doodles in general can, can be, be finicky. pretty finicky. Absolutely. Yeah, and so uh, trying to do your best to make sure that they're getting in those calories is... Uh, a definitely objective number one. Um, but yeah, we love the Purina uh, Pro Pro Plan, um, Pro Plan Probiotic. Probiotic. A lot of things. Yeah, fees. and you can get those on Amazon. You can go to kit.co slash doodles of NC. Um, it's usually linked in all of our YouTube videos, and we just have like a list of all those um, essentials. Yeah, essentials that we use. Um, ah, no ma'am. Are any of your moms sad when the pups go home? That's a good question. So since we transition them before they go home, they get, so they get weaned, and then the moms go ahead and head back to their guardian homes. So they're so happy to be seeing their humans again that they, that I don't think they really remember that they even had puppies. I'm sure they do, but they don't act like they're sad. We have had one mom have some sadness, and that was Shelly Mack. That's right. She would carry a toy around even though it didn't have the scent of anybody on it, she would carry a toy around and she would whine. And that lasted for about three days, and then she was content. But we try to get all of our moms groomed right before they go home because that fresh smell, does they don't have the puppy smell on them anymore. Um, And then weaning them just helps that transition. So when Bella, obviously Bella is our full-time dog, so when she weans her puppies, or back then when she was breeding... Um, I would say she did the same thing. She would, she would carry a toy around a little bit and show a little bit of emotion, but, um, but nothing significant. Like they never like got depressed or like stopped eating or anything like that. But Bella now, sometimes if we don't have any puppies in the garage, she'll carry around a toy. She does. She looks confused. Like she wants, she wants to know what's going on. Yeah. If anybody of any of our dogs in our program, I would say it's Bella who's retired that's so used to seeing puppies all True. the time. She uh, loves, loves being a grandma. Yeah. She anytime I open the door, so right now the garage nursery doesn't have any puppies in it, so the door is shut, so we don't have to heat it. Um, but anytime I open the door, like if I'm washing mats and stuff like that, the washing machine's out there. Bella immediately perks up because she wants to see if there's puppies that are in there. Yeah, it's really. And when fun. I show her that there's not, she almost looks like disappointed. <laughs> Okay, uh, what food do you recommend for adult dogs? There are many. Oh, yeah, there's so nothing many. Nothing like, what's the website that you recommend people go to to check out the food that they're currently on? Dogfoodadvisor.com. That's right. So dogfoodadvisory.com. Definitely check that out, and you can compare your current dog food. And it's non-biased, so they're not... Uh, they're it's not, not sponsored by anybody. It's a very... Yeah. Um, Low maintenance website. It is, <laughs> but it has a lot of great information. Oh yeah. Um, but we use From, uh, so it's like a small batch that you can get at um, local pet stores. Do they have it? They don't have. They it do on not Chewy. have it on Chewy. Yeah. It's not a big chain one. Yeah, but um, we've we've really enjoyed it. And what we like about it the most is that you can transition to any different flavor from food without having any sort of digestion issues and transitioning. Um, Which is helpful for doodles that are finicky. Because if you change up the protein, it's going to keep them interested. That's right. Um, Bella has an allergy towards chicken. And so we (laughs) give her the fish. Oh, that's a cute one. Look at this. Karen's over here multitasking, sending pictures to families of their puppies. I should say potential puppies. Uh, Pup baking hasn't happened yet for these guys. Uh, So someone in here, I can't remember. um, Yeah, there it is. 
So someone said, is mom there for puppy picking? Most of the time, yes. We always really try to have mom there because we think it's important for families to meet her and to see her. But there's a few times like um, Bella Grace and Oakley, or Bella Grace, not Oakley. She won't be there for her puppy picking because we're going to a gymnastics meet all the way in Florida when her puppy picking should have been. So Bella Grace's gets moved a little bit later. So they'll pick at five weeks. And so by that time, the puppies have already transitioned and mom has weaned. Um, and so she'll head home. But most of the time, if all possible, we keep the mom here. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see, Lona wrote back. She said she refused to eat any of her prenatals, kibble, canned food. I've tried pureed liver. Baby food, boiled chicken, roasted chicken. Do you want to eat any of that? beef, steak, tuna. Wow. But this is my dog. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine a guardian home doing extraordinary measures all day to get the food in dog. How uh, far along is she? Yeah, question, Leona. Uh, can you comment down below with how far along she is in her pregnancy? I can't imagine a dog turning all that stuff down. I know. That's crazy. Yeah. There was for a time we did a lot of research and we um, we were trying to help our dogs transition after delivering puppies that we went to chicken and rice for a lot a while but they weren't getting enough nutrients calories yeah and the they calories were getting in. so skinny yeah. and we would feel horrible because we were following what the vet suggested to clear their to clear their digestion of the placenta and stuff like that and to get rid of the diarrhea. They had always told us, well, use chicken and rice. Like, just go to a diet of chicken and rice. But we were not feeding them enough. And so we quickly did more research and found that it's more important to get the calories in. And then we found the Purina um, <coughs> probiotic. And that has changed. It's a game changer on firming up poop, which is, I know that's weird to say. But when you're a breeder, that's what you talk about. Yeah. Um, and then now our moms keep the weight on, which after nursing all these puppies you would think they would lose but they do great you're gonna have to cover your mic next time so you don't blow out any of everybody's speakers on their tv Sorry. or phone <laughs> hopefully you didn't have your <clears throat> uh, headphones on for that cough <laughs> uh, these are all these like um semantics that i never knew about with oh, live know. that's right when does mom stop breastfeeding at four weeks old. Yeah, so we usually transition starting at four weeks old, and it's really the mom is what initiates yeah, it. Yeah, she's the initiator. Yeah. And each mom is different. It could be four weeks and two days. It could be four weeks on the dot. It could be five weeks. Yeah. When they start wanting to be with us, and then they're like standing, not wanting to lay down like this to nurse, um, that tells us that they're showing us signs that they're ready. That's good. Okay, Leona says due date is May 10th. Oh, so she has a while. Yeah. Okay, so it's in the first half. So I wouldn't worry too much, Leona. I think that she's just probably having um, just some of that morning sickness slash like hormones changing. After the second half of the pregnancy, her appetite should really pick up, and that's when you can free feed them. You can let them eat as much as they want. So yeah. hopefully it'll turn around quickly. Yeah, if you have the ability to weigh her, uh, I think that would be good just to try and make sure that they are maintaining weight. You don't want your mom dog to start Lose. losing weight. Mm -hmm. um, so we've done, so for our smaller ones, uh, I can pick up like someone like Annie and just stand on my scale in our bathroom and kind of do the math of the difference between what I weigh and what I weigh with Annie. Uh, one of the larger dogs, if you have a large breed, you might have to get a little bit of a scale to be able to monitor that because um, you just want to make sure you're taking care of your dog in addition to the puppies that are growing. I'm sure your vet wouldn't mind too if you, like our vet has their scale in the lobby. That's true. So you could probably just run them over there. That's a good idea. Um, when you pick, can you tell if one has mainly poodle hair that may fluff like a poodle? That's uh, from Gary K. Thanks so much for the question. Absolutely, Gary. We can tell 
right off the bat who's gotten more texture and curl and who is going to be a smooth coat which will lead to a wavy coat yeah so we did that with um, bella grace let's do it with annie's puppies so annie's do we puppies have anybody we don't have anybody that's going to be truly curly but miss aqua here has the most texture out of everybody okay let's but i would still call her side by side comparison yeah so this one to this one like this one is completely smooth and this one's got some texture in it but it's yeah. not those s's like we saw on blue and bella grace's area yeah so if you're looking for a poodle coat just like what aaron was saying is try and look for on top of their head that has a lot of wave to it uh that's going to tell you that they'll end up being uh more true of, curly yeah true curly which is going to be you know similar to what you'll see with a poodle um let's see janet thanks so much for the question so my four-month-old cockapoo who is born partially blind in both eyes oh. and totally deaf. Oh wow. Goodness. Potty training is going well, but she chews everything, including me, and it's very and it's very headstrong. How do I train her? Oh, wow. that's a great question, but I do not know the answer to it. Uh, yeah. Comment below if we have any uh, um, trainers on here for any kind of suggestions to help out uh, Janet. But my goodness, you have a true heart. Uh, to take on a, yeah. a dog that is blind and deaf. Um, but I imagine that the mouth then becomes more of... That's their sensory input. Yeah, so the mouthing is comfort mm -hmm. to sense that you're there. Um, wow, that's fascinating. Uh, Chartran, hey. Hi, Chartran. Uh, what, are, what is your thought on tuxedo coat puppy? I have a huge respect for your practice that you set one price for all puppies no matter what the color and not seeking after the trendy color coats. <laughs> oh, that's interesting that you pick up on that. Um, yeah. So what's my thoughts on tuxedos? Yeah. I mean, I think they're beautiful dogs. It's just not something that I um, pursue, but I have a good friend in Georgia that does them and she just has a, she has a stud that- um, Oh, hold on, we got a lost puppy. She has a stud that regularly uh, produces puppies that have that type of coat um, and so once she has she's kept that cycle going so she's kept puppies that have the same genetics as her so she's built that on there um, but it's not something that just because you do two parties together that you're going to get tuxedos you could get two of them out of five or you could get five out of five it's a whole it's like there is no guarantee so that's why breeders um, charge more for them because there's no guarantee that they're going to get them. But I think they're beautiful dogs and I feel like breeders can do colors and keep personality in perspective. Like I have great respect for the breeder that I was thinking about that does the tuxedo doodles. Um, she um, definitely is a well-respected breeder and she temperament is just as important to her as color. <laughs> Poor Bella Grace is confused. She wants to check on her puppies, but then she also wants to come out. So we'll just leave her door open. Yeah, Annie's in here, so she's fine. There you go. So Jill says, my question is, in general, for someone who works full time, is it okay to get a puppy or a dog? And Jill, I would say, hello, first of all. And absolutely, you can definitely be a full time working mom and be a dog mom. Um, Maybe in the beginning, it would take somebody to let the puppy out during the day, or if you can come home. Somebody brought a leaf in. <laughs> or if you can um, come home during lunch and, and be, able to, um, be able to let the puppy out to go to the bathroom. Like that's the biggest concern when they're a baby is being in their crate too long which could then have, you could have an accident, which would not be fun um, for the puppy or for you to have to clean up. Yeah. Um, so I would say in the beginning, about every three hours, they need to go out during the day. Um, but yeah, but in the morning, I tell people, you really only need like three good sessions a day for playing. So if you wake up in the morning and you go on a nice walk, then at lunchtime, you have either a like stimulation game or a... Um, or another walk and then when you get home you've got like a great amount of time to spend with them and then you're heading to bed so 
three good sessions a day is plenty for a puppy because they are literally sleeping 80% of the day anyway. Yeah, and you can have a dog walker come over to your house too. Yeah. And that can help uh, during the day if you're not able to come back to the home during one of those mm -hmm. sessions that Aaron's was talking about. Or you're doggy able to, daycare. Yeah, or a doggy daycare, but as a puppy? You can send them to doggy daycare starting at around four months old. Okay, so that eight weeks to four months you're gonna yeah, you got eight weeks where you would need to find somebody yeah that makes sense okay jill says thanks you're welcome uh let's see scrolling through oh we should go to oakley's we only have 15 minutes left oh you're right okay all right we're gonna make another transition we take to the, the newest laptop? babies okay go you take yeah. this I'm gonna try and move the camera really slow so you guys can. For the folks that haven't watched our channel before, you can kind of see a glimpse into our home of how things are set up. So this is just our you know, typical living room. And then over here, we have another area and this is where Oakley's puppies are. And you can, this is a good test to see the temperature inside uh, is, Annie, no ma'am. Annie, uh, 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 good girl. Oakley runs a little hot, and so she likes to rustle up her mat. Come on, straighten it back out. Oakley, hold on, will you guard that? Yeah. Okay. Come here, Missy. See, this is something special that you guys don't normally get to see in our regular videos. There you go. Hey, you brought a ball in here. There we go. Perfect. All right, I'm going to set the camera down right here. Oakley, how did you get a ball in here? I don't know. She's so silly. Are you, are you teaching your puppies how to play with the ball? <laughs> so this is the newest babies. They are six weeks old. You can tell they're very tiny because they have the most extra in their, um, in their collars when we zip tied them. <laughs> Oscar says, yes, Oakley. Oh yeah, they're on this list. <laughs> That's fun. Oakley, lie down. Come here, lie down. There you go. All right, well on the boys, we've got tan. And we've got black. Let's see who else. We've got red. And then we've got green. These guys are so tiny. Mom is Oakley, obviously. And dad is Nipsey. And then the girls, we've got Miss Purple. Miss Teal. And last but not least, Miss Pink. Oh, this is a great one for coat. Tons and tons of. Yeah. Well, there you go. Kind of hold it steady. Oakley. Oakley. <laughs> Wait one second, buddy. Um, you're not here. Let me turn it. Turn so it around so I can see. Oh, there we go. Ha. Other so way. Good. Other there way. you go. I don't know if you can really see it. You want to go um, open the blinds? Yeah. Let me do that. And then I'll look at the questions. Is that better? Oh yeah, so much better. Shirley says, my 22 pound, eight and a half month old mini golden doodle hasn't gone into heat. I plan to spay her and the vet recommends wait three months after the first heat. What is the average age that a doodle will have their first heat? Oh, um, so that's an interesting point. I've, I am hearing more vets say wait a heat cycle. But I feel like that is a little nervous, a little nerve wracking because you have to be really attentive to them when they're on their heat cycle. They can get pregnant super fast and it does not take long for dogs to, um, to mate and to be what they call tied. It just doesn't take long at all. Um, and you can't leave them outside. You can't put them in a fence. They can breed through a fence, all kinds of stuff. So. But if your vet's recommending it and that's what you want to do, then I think that's fine. 
But um, heat cycles are so variable. They happen. Um, some of my moms don't go into heat until like 14 or 15 months. And especially minis. The smaller the dog they are, the longer it takes for them to go into heat traditionally. Oh, wow. That's yeah. something new I learned. Yeah, um, my big ones go into heat anywhere from eight to nine months. Okay. Gary, that was a poodle coat. So again, with the S's on top of their head is gonna tell you the curlier the coat is. So the straighter the coat, it's gonna be more of a wavy coat. Mm -hmm. Cumberland Cavaliers, thanks so much for your comment about our flight nanny quitting on us, but it's okay. Uh, we feel like it's a better situation with us flying them ourselves. Our family sure have really enjoyed us being the ones that uh, fly them versus someone that they've never met before. Yeah. It's added a huge personal touch. Yeah. Oh, Peggy, that's a great question. Does the mother get upset if another mother comes near their babies? There's a, there's a high potential that, yeah. uh, that most of the time they're okay. But, hey, see, there you go. <laughs> yep. So, but they're, you know, you have to think in the wild, uh, they'd be very, uh, very protective of someone coming in just because of the dangers of them getting hurt. There's nobody here. Quiet. Oh, there is something coming. <laughs> Shh. Hey, Aubrey. Our daughter came in the front door. Um, so, just depends on the dog. Yeah. Every every mom dog is different. There are some mom dogs that would let others nurse their babies and be content with that and and literally like share. And there are some moms that don't want them to even walk by their fence, like yeah. by their nursery area, by their not fence but little gate door. Um, and so it just depends on the mom. But all of our moms, um, we work with them enough that they um, like they all go out to go to the bathroom together. We take them out as a group because we think that's great for them just to make sure that they know that they're a part of the same pack. Um, and so that kind of helps, helps transition them so they don't get too, too upset if anybody's around them. But we have really stressed to our kids and to each other, like, shut the gate behind you so that way no mom can come in or no, the, if you don't want the other mom to go out, like, for some reason, then that's what, just make sure that we do that. Yeah, the other piece is that, you know, when we have two moms that have similar age puppies and they look in there and they go, oh my goodness, there's puppies in there. Are they my puppies? Right. And they so they, are. they have this natural, you know... Um, I'm trying to think of the way to describe it. Instinct. Yeah, natural instinct to care. Yeah. And so then they get confused. Yeah. So I think that's the biggest thing that we look out for. So like I would say when Bella Graces were born and last week's live, Annie was very eager. She wanted to get to these puppies. Like she wanted to get to Bella Grace's puppies. Um, but now she hears their sounds and she knows that they're not hers. I can't believe how tiny these guys are. They still, like, so they're almost one week old tomorrow, and they still fit in the, my palm. Wow. That's incredible. <laughs> so Tritran says, do you consider COI when pairing the parents? The COI trend, trendy color puppy is quite high, and there are more chances to have more puppies with designer colors in a litter, but that's not all healthy. Right. So COI, it means how related they are to each other. I forget what exactly it stands for. But um, we don't actually test for that because we don't do any type of inbreeding. When we have our moms, our moms might be sisters, but our studs come from another litter um, no matter what. So not even our litters. They usually come from an outside source. So like Nipsey came from a poodle breeder that we don't have any other associations with. Um, and then I have written down, so Ripken is Bella's, um, our Bella's, it's her grandson. But I have written down um, if anybody couldn't breed with him. Like, so if anybody, if any of our girls were related to Bella, we would make sure that I didn't breed with them, that he would breed with Mosley because Mosley is from a different breeder completely. So it's just keeping records and making sure that you don't overlap any of them. Um, 
which is what makes it a little frustrating that they're not registerable because that would be a great way to keep track of that, but it's just up to us to make sure that we don't. Yeah, that makes sense. Do you see different litter temperaments from calm and serene to hyper and giddy? <laughs> How do you accommodate to each litter temperament? That's a fun question. I would say every litter is different and we don't necessarily have um, litters that I would say are calmer than others because there's always at least one that loves to be the most playful one that wants to approach us the fastest. Um, but I would say the biggest difference is their cleanliness. <laughs> there are some puppies that just are not clean. Like they have a harder time potty training in the beginning. They, um, they dig in their bowl when they're, when they've got water or food and they just, um, they just are a little more dirty. Um, and then we have some moms that just don't clean up after their puppy as well. So every litter is different, but I would say we have a variety of personalities within the litter, but the, but the trend is, um, is their cleanliness. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So one of the, um, questions that we kind of skipped out on, it says, which litter was Bella Grace from? She looks a lot like Annie. Um, let me get my phone. I'm going to turn these guys around so you guys can see their cute faces. Oh, that's a good idea. So speaking of those records, I have it all on my phone and I send it to myself on a regular basis. So if my phone ever goes away, then I've still got it. Oh, that's right. Bella Grace was a Zelly and Duncan baby. Annie is a Buster and Noodles baby. So not related. Yeah. Uh, Leona, thanks so much. That's really kind of you. She what said you, do, you, do, you guys do a, a stellar job both with your program and your social media. Kudos to you and best wishes for your continued sex. Does JP still work outside of the home or is he a full-time with you career for you both? Yes. So I no, am. Yes to what? I am. <laughs> <You're> like, yes. <laughs> yes. So I do. Uh, I am full-time doing doodles. Uh, but I also do some work on the side for commercial real estate, uh, management, um, and, and then, website creation. Yeah. And then website creation. I help other breeders, uh, and other businesses design their websites and be able to talk about those. So thanks for mentioning that you enjoy our social media, uh, because I that help. means a lot to you. Yeah. <laughs> it means a lot to me. Um, just because there's not. Uh, there's not a whole lot of people I, I feel like uh, doing it really well. And so you just try and learn new things like doing lives like this. We just want uh, so many people to be able to see how we care and race for our puppies. And so we just try different methods and see which one works. Mm -hmm. So thanks so much for the comment. Uh, Carmen says, I did not get a notification when you're going to come on. So I didn't get to hear from you. Didn't get to hear your answer if you test your dogs for DM. DM. I'd have to try to think of acronyms. Well, I can go to Pawprint Genetics and see what it is if she doesn't answer back fast enough. Yeah. Carmen, comment down below what DM stands for. I mean, I'm sure we do. These puppies are almost a week old. They're six days, Erin? Mm -hmm. Yep. So Oakley, Oakley's puppies are six days old. Thanks, BJ Mommy, oh for gosh. the question. Of course, it's the website's down. Are you serious? Yes. Okay. Well, after this stream, if it doesn't come back on, we'll, uh, we'll comment for dogs. in the comment section. Oh, okay. Oh, is it now? It's working? No, but I just looked up what is DM for dogs. What is it? And it is degenerative myelopathy, um, similar to ALS in humans. Oh, interesting. Okay, so, what, so you have to say what ALS is for humans. ALS is amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, which means a progressive paralysis of muscles. And so eventually somebody passes away from not being able to breathe. Mm -hmm. um, degenerative myelopathy is a disease that progresses and affects the spinal cord of dogs, causing weakness and inability to walk. If it is on paw print genetics, we test for it. I just can't pull up paw print genetics right now. Yeah. But if you give me the computer, it might work. Okay. Ugh. 
And then we'll have to say goodbye because we've got to go to Bible study. Yeah, so I would say this is the last few minutes. So comment down below with any kind of questions that you guys have. We'll stay on for a few more minutes. It's now just after 530. PowerPoint. And then I have a question for you guys. What would you guys like to see uh, for our upcoming lives? Is there anything outside of just seeing the puppies that you guys would like to know about our business? And then while Aaron's looking that up, be sure to give... Degenerative It is tested. Oh, good. Yeah. So you can see... Can you show that? Yeah, they can see it's going to be really... Uh... Oh. But you can just see like an example. You can like scroll through and see that. So they test, so Paw Print Genetics will do a full panel on any diseases they have found for the Golden Retriever and any diseases they have found for the Poodle. And, and they, they'll test both of them for you. And then if anything new comes up, they will call you, ask you if that dog is still breeding. And if it is, they'll run the test for you for free. Oh, they keep the... Uh... They keep the sample. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. And this and, is paw print genetics, by the way, that does it. But great question. So, yes, we do. And, uh, for example, Pepper is clear. Can you, let's see, can you guys even see that? Sorry if you're not interested in seeing that. <laughs> it's interesting. It is. Uh, we, we Some people love um, seeing, like, the breeding aspect and the just curiosity factor of it. Hi, Oakley. Oh, interesting. So it says, yes, I think a bunch of us were on another stream waiting for it to start, so we missed the beginning of this one. Oh, All right. You mean when you transferred over the Facebook, it wasn't starting until then? I guess so. Ask them what were they watching it on. Yeah, is this for YouTube, PJ Mommy? Um, let's see. Shirley says, thank you for everything you do. The doodles are super happy, and we, well loved and cared for that's really sweet um bonnie these puppies are beautiful their color is gorgeous yeah oh, i agree i did forget to mention we what? have three spots on this litter available oh that's so interesting if anybody yeah. has a family member anybody that wants to get a little red doodle send them to our website yeah these will okay pj mommy says youtube oh, okay perfect i'll start working on that and see if um see what caused that one so thanks for the feedback uh, but yeah check out uh, doodles of nc uh for the details of these puppies so we don't know which three um, but puppy picking is coming up soon if you're interested in uh, a mini red golden doodle mm -hmm. they're super cute right oakley yeah. kayla says can you show how you test for temperament so we don't do any official testing, but I, through every single um, um, stimulation assessment that I do, like, so for like a squeaker or the vacuum, um, when I had to do their, when I do their um, upside down on their ENS or like they're on their back, I just make comments and I um, put them in a little paragraph for each of my families. So it could be something is like this. It could be like Miss Orange. Um, responded really well to the squeaker, but got intimidated by the vacuum. So loud sounds are affecting her still. And, uh, but she does great on her back, loves belly rubs, and is always the first to come see me when I sit down. So something like that. We don't do any formal type of assessments um, because they just haven't really seemed super reliable. Um, there's, it's a lot of subjectivity because every puppy needs, needs to be done at the same time. And we found that, and you also have to have the same person that does them. So there's just a lot of, um, interesting aspects that go into personality testing. Um, and like I said earlier, I honestly think that their personality changes a little bit as they get older. Um, so I prefer doing like little fun characteristics because by the time that they're done with all of their assessments, like the vacuum doesn't bother any of them by the time that they go home. Um, so it's just kind of a little bit of a heads up as to like who's coming over first, who might be the chattiest, um, who likes to play with who, and people love to see those personal little tidbits. Awesome. Uh, Courtney Usher, hey, 
Good to Aww, see you on here. That's hello. so awesome. Um, so glad you were able to catch a, a live. Uh, so we forget to do her question. So Amanda Satterfield, will their red coat fade? That's an excellent question. Um, yeah, a lot of times most doodles will fade for sure. But these guys will probably, like, so Oakley used to be this color. And so now she's faded a little bit. So I don't know if oh, you can see hold that. On. Let me, I gotta move the camera. There you go. Oakley so was Oakley probably Oakley closer was, to this color. Yeah. So she was this color and then eventually she fade, she faded to this. And Oakley's almost three years old. Um, so still like a red color and it gets lighter in the summer and darker in the, in the winter. And then also doodles get, um, lighter as you cut them. So yep. if you give them a short haircut, they're going to be lighter colored. And if you give them, if you keep them longer, they're going to have the same type of color. Awesome. Yep. Courtney says, have you guys thought about a podcast where you can talk about breeder topics in more detailed and more intensive? Like a good, bad, and the ugly. Oh, man. That sounds awesome. That could be interesting. That could be really cool. Oakley's laying on our puppies now. <laughs> Oakley. <laughs> um, we got to wrap up, babe. Yeah, you're right. I just like hanging out with everybody. It's I fun. know. It's fun. Yeah. But now we have to get one child to volleyball and get to our Bible study. Yeah. Well, guys, again, I love hanging out with you guys every single time me too thank you guys so much for being on here make sure to give this a like um so we can share the love with everybody uh so we can have more people more questions uh and more uh people on this stream uh that we can learn from so thank you guys so much for what you guys do with asking these questions and commenting it means the world to us yeah. uh so thank you um last one gary k do you ever have 50 pound puppies 50 pounds absolutely yeah so Charlie, someone referenced it below. Charlie would be one of them. Unfortunately, that one is full. I think but we'll it's do full. what we'll do one in the future for sure. But the next mom that's coming up is Ruby, and Ruby and Ripkin will produce, I would say, close to forty to forty-five pound dogs. So it won't be exactly fifty, but they'll be close. Yeah. And so, then we'll have other moms in the future, like in the summertime, that'll go into heat that will produce that size too. Awesome. Hey. Take care, you guys. We'll see you guys next time.